Uh, good afternoon. My name is Keith Boone. I'm a senior managing director with Accenture and responsible for our technology business uh, amongst a number of different industries, including manufacturing and automotive. And I'm very proud of our partnership and what we're doing with AWS here in this space. And uh, you know, from our perspective at Accenture, it is the number one investment industry we have right now on a global basis in, in, in terms of uh, not only our talent, but also uh, our capital and where we're putting it. And you're going to hear a little bit this afternoon about what we think some of the futures are in this industry. And hopefully, uh, we'll get some good questions out of the audience related to that. I want to introduce uh, the person who will be doing most of the talking. His name is Zephyr Rizaki. Zephyr uh, joined us in Accenture uh, in the last year or so. Zephyr comes from us from General Motors, so he's been in this uh, business for a long time, and before that he worked at Google. Uh, and Zephyr runs our global uh, automotive or, or uh, mobility business uh, from a digital standpoint and what we do. So he'll be talking to you about what our offerings are. Wayne, along with that, we've got a gentleman, a uh, brand new managing director named Wayne Marley. Wayne is our offering lead, so the one responsible for putting together uh, what our technology looks like, and he'll be walking us through a couple of demonstrations this afternoon as well. So, uh, you know, please, uh, if you have a question, we've got to, we'll leave some time at the end. We'll, we'll be glad to take some Q&A. We'll also, in the lounge, we'll be glad to talk to anybody about what we're doing there with uh, AWS and partnering with them through that afterwards. Uh, but, but don't be shy at all through the discussion. If you, if you want to ask a question, we'll, we'll be glad to, to stop and take a few questions as well. Good deal? Makes sense? All right, with that, let me, uh, let me introduce my good friend, Zephyr, and uh, Zephyr will take it from here and, uh, and show you the way from an automotive mobility standpoint. Thanks, Keith. Yep. Hi, everyone. Ha uh, good afternoon. Um, just out of curiosity, how many people are here from the automotive industry? Uh, you work in automotive or mobility? Okay, uh, maybe about a third of hands. Um, so that's good. We've got... Uh, audience from other industries, uh, other areas, um, and that's exactly what we want to see in automotive. Um, it's interesting that we're in an IoT track uh, talking about cars because uh, vehicles are more and more just becoming uh, big IoT devices, um, w flush with many different sensors uh, and many different opportunities to integrate with the world around them. Um, so that's a bit of what we're going to talk about today, um, our view on how vehicles can integrate with the world around them um, to create interesting new mobility services uh, and interesting new data-driven products. Um, you know, it's important to acknowledge that uh, uh, transportation is becoming more and more difficult. Um, again, out of show of hands, how many people own a vehicle or lease a vehicle? So most people. And uh, of those of you that use a vehicle regularly, how many of you commute on a daily basis to work, home, you know, the things that you have to do? Okay, still a good number of hands. And how many, <clears throat> how many of you actually enjoy commuting? One guy right there. He, he likes to torture himself by driving. Uh, but more and more, we're seeing trends around uh, urbanization, uh, creating increased traffic conditions and people having to spend more and more time on the road and taking less and less time uh, to live their lives. And these are the types of problems um, that we believe we can help to solve. You know, there are a number of travel pain points. Um, we talked about traffic. Parking uh, is another one. Um, and we've, we've seen statistics that people spend nearly 30% of their time in their vehicle just looking for parking. Um, which is an incredible pain point. Um, also, as these frictions are increasing, our tolerance as users for those frictions uh, is actually decreasing. Uh, we live in a more uh, connected society than ever. Um, we want things on demand. We expect things to be connected and personalized. Uh, and that's true of our vehicles, uh, especially because we spend so much time in them. Um, also, another trend uh, is around monetization. Uh, so automakers, suppliers, uh, everyone is trying to figure out new revenue streams and new channels uh, to grow their business. Uh, and especially through connected technologies, uh, the data coming off of these vehicles, there are many new opportunities to monetize the product beyond just the vehicle that an automaker sells. So we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like. Um, and lastly, 
there are so many new and emerging technologies that are enabling uh, us to do these things, to uh, create new products and services, create new types of user experiences, uh, and all of these together are really driving this disruption that we're seeing in the industry. So when we talk about what the industry is actually doing to uh, take advantage of these opportunities, there are really four key areas that they're focusing on. And this is nothing new. We've been talking about CASE for a number of years, but I like to spell out what CASE really means. Uh, it's connected, so making sure that the vehicle is connected and networked and able to uh, send data, send software, uh, send and receive. Um, that enables things like autonomous driving, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about the new value stories and the new use cases that autonomy uh, will enable. Uh, shared mobility, so the opportunity to actually share rides with uh, carpooling models, ride hailing models. Um, you know, it, it's going well beyond just personal ownership these days. Um, and then certainly electrification. You know, uh, electric vehicles are opening up all sorts of new opportunities for new vehicle architectures uh, and new types of services that you can build on top of those architectures. So when we think about these uh, case opportunities, it really reframes the way we think about the car. Um, and that's why we're here in an IoT session. Really, the vehicle is a networked device that connects to other vehicles. It connects to people through your personal devices. It connects to a number of uh, endpoints, whether that's retail or uh, entertainment. Uh, all of the different things that we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, there are ways for us to create unique opportunities inside of the vehicle uh, to interface with those different uh, endpoints. And we believe as this starts to evolve and as, as these vehicles become increasingly networked and you start to see progress in these different case domains, that we'll start to get to a future where there's a seamless set of mobility options uh, to help me get from point A to point B, whether that means pri a privately owned vehicle, whether that means uh, an autonomous uh, robo-taxi that comes to my door and picks me up, um, first mile, last mile integration, uh, AI that helps me plan my travel options. Uh, and these are the things that people across the industry are focusing a lot of attention and a lot of investment in trying to solve. Um, when we did a survey of some of the biggest focus areas for automotive executives, we found that 94% of, of executives across the industry are making big investments in these areas, in uh, case and particularly in cloud, to figure out how to interface their vehicle with the rest of the world and create some of these new opportunities. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, what those different areas are. So I, I want to take a couple of minutes just to dive deeper into each of these case, case areas and talk about what each of these things enables. So uh, my favorite example of the uh, who's leading in the connected vehicle space, uh, Tesla is doing a fantastic job of this. You know, they have really defined a software-driven architecture for their vehicle. There's a big emphasis on utilizing the data coming off of those vehicles um, and they can do things like you know, unique personalization, uh, similar to the way in which we do a Google search and hit I'm feeling lucky to find that answer to my question. You can now hit I'm feeling hungry in your Tesla and get navigated to a, uh, a, a food establishment and, uh, and grab a meal. You know, uh, those types of unique personal experiences inside of the vehicle um, are just the starting point. Uh, and now you can have those integrated services like in-vehicle commerce, being able to buy whether it's you know, uh, a, a coffee pre-ordered uh, through your head unit um, or a retail order that's waiting for you at the curb. Um, there are opportunities to build these types of experiences in uh, into a connected vehicle that never existed before. Um, and it's worth noting that of the... Uh, fleet of vehicles on the road today, we estimate that only about 25 to 30% of those vehicles are connected. 
And that's going to grow rapidly over the coming years as uh, more and more vehicles that are sold are connected. Um, and so the opportunity across the ecosystem to offer these types of services is going to grow exponentially uh, over the coming years. Let's talk a little bit about autonomous technology and what that's going to enable. Uh, the picture you see here is the concept of an autonomous school bus. Uh, and you know, the types of things that we think about where pulling the human out from behind the wheel uh, and enabling a robotic system con to control the vehicle, hopefully reducing human error and increasing safety, um, hopefully in improving the uh, economics of operating those vehicles when human capital uh, isn't your biggest expense. Um, also increased uptime. You know, we're not depending on when a human can be awake and, and able to, to drive. Uh, you can have fleet vehicles, for example, uh, long-haul trucks that can be on the road around the clock. Uh, and, and so these are very interesting uh, enhancements that autonomous driving allows that improves safety, user experience, uh, and the economics of the business. Not to mention allowing us time and freedom back uh, when we're not occupied behind the wheel. The sharing economy also plays a really important part in the mobility uh, growth that we're seeing. Um, not only, of course, does sh do shared rides allow for increased social connections between people, but when people can share the cost of a ride, the economics of uh, ride sharing become uh, more favorable, so you can start to see increased access to underserved populations. Uh, you can start to see increased utilization of vehicles as a fleet of vehicles can serve a larger population than maybe just a one-to-one -one ownership ratio. Um, so that's why we're seeing such a, an emphasis on new sharing mobility models and, and how that will improve the economics of mobility. And lastly, the trend towards electric. Um, obviously, uh, the zero emissions uh, benefit that everyone is, is excited about, the environmental benefits are very important, but the move towards electric is also changing the way we think about our vehicle. Uh, charging uh, at a charging station is a different experience from topping up your fuel tank at a gas station. Now, instead of five minutes, it might take 30 minutes. Uh, and so how do we uh, optimize for using our uh, range on our vehicle? How do we plan our trips to accommodate for those charging sessions? Uh, how do we find conveniences where, you know, I want to find a charging station that's near a restaurant where I can feed my kids? Uh, these are now the new types of considerations that electric vehicle owners have to make, and these are, again, opportunities for us to build uh, services uh, that can help make those decisions. So when we take all of those different uh, case initiatives and think about the solutions, uh, the benefits uh, of the work that's happening in those domains, uh, giving time back to people. Who would have thought that four and a half years we spend behind the wheel of a vehicle stuck in traffic and for us to be able to give back that type of time where you're now sitting back, reading a book, getting work done, having a conversation with your family while a vehicle is able to drive itself. We talked a lot about economics. You know, are, through autonomous robo-taxis, uh, are we able to drive costs down uh, as much as 70% to be able to improve the economics of that business, increase access to lesser served communities who couldn't afford uh, an Uber or Lyft ride today? Less pollution, obviously, through uh, electric vehicles, uh, 40 to 60 percent decrease in emissions. Um, we've talked about equitable access, uh, and we've talked about increased safety. You know, uh, the traffic accidents are one of the largest sources of deaths in, uh, in America, and for us to be able to take on that challenge and deploy technologies to increase the safety of mobility solutions is really an important opportunity for us. So we're very excited about uh, the opportunity to address some of these uh, pain points and, and create solutions that can really make a difference. So let's talk a little bit about the types of solutions that we could actually build. If we wanted to really get tactical about you know, how do I build some of these uh, different uh, experiences, what does that look like? 
So here I've got something that I call kind of the, the mobility strategy map. Um, and it's really important when you're talking about mobility to look beyond the vehicle. Uh, on the left side of the slide in blue, you'll see um, what we call the vehicle portfolio. And there are a number of different uh, modalities um, that we can use, whether that's a traditional vehicle portfolio. So uh, electric vehicles, uh, we're talking a lot about micro-mobility these days, um, and certainly the interface with public transit um, is very important. But now we can also start to think about new service models. So along the bottom, uh, you can see different ways beyond just private ownership for people to access these different vehicle types. So vehicle reservation models. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with things like Zipcar uh, or General Motors' Maven solution. Um, that's a, it's a reservation system. Um, so we can check vehicles out when we need them uh, and return them when we're done using them. Um, there's also growing popularity around peer-to-peer -peer sharing models. Uh, so uh, there's another interesting statistic that uh, our vehicles actually sit idle over 90% of the time that we own them. Um, and so for that 90% when a vehicle is sitting idle, can I actually monetize that vehicle? Well, when it's connected, I have greater control over access to the vehicle, understanding its location, uh, and being able to uh, lend that vehicle out and make sure that it's back to me in time for when I need to use it. Uh, so service models is another important uh, aspect of mobility um, that we can build. Um, there's uh, an important uh, aspect of integrating with infrastructure uh, and how do we uh, integrate vehicles and mobility solutions with traffic systems. Uh, this is something that uh, many cities and municipalities are, are investigating and using technologies like DSRC to coordinate traffic signals with vehicle flow, uh, electric charging, uh, and then use of curb space in cities, on campuses, um, so infrastructure and the use of infrastructure is very important as well. Uh, and then the, the top category uh, we call monetization and value. What are the different uh, business models, monetization mechanisms that we can use uh, to help people get access to these different types of systems? So if you take all of that and you wrap it around a set of enabling technologies, and that's really what we're seeing in the middle. Um, these are the opportunities to integrate these types of services with your personal devices. So being able to, through my phone, reserve a vehicle, whether that's hailing a ride or checking out a car. Um, the opportunity to use my phone as a key to access my vehicle. Um, the opportunity to have in-vehicle personalization and create unique sets of services um, that are tailored to your preferences or your family's preferences. Uh, these are all enabling technologies that really can help differentiate the user experience. And that's where AWS can really come into play. We'll show you in, in a few minutes a couple of examples that our team has built um, of how these enabling technologies actually create a unique and personalized mobility experience for a family that's going on a road trip. Uh, but you know, we're all here to talk about how AWS enables uh, many of these innovations. Uh, and that's really the area of excitement and where many automotive uh, uh, companies are investing heavily in partnerships with AWS to quickly be able to stand up some of these new services and new experiences uh, on top of a number of these enabling technologies. Just a few examples of the types of things that we're seeing um, out in the marketplace. Uh, there's a big emphasis around personalization, um, so voice assist assistance, uh, being able to use AI and analytics and voice interfaces to create uh, an experience when I get inside of the vehicle that is uh, unique to me. Uh, and especially as we start to pull drivers um, out from behind the wheel, how does the vehicle take on a persona um, that I can connect with and that I can relate to? Um, similarly, uh, in-vehicle commerce and transactions. So how do I uh, use technology inside of the vehicle to expedite and streamline my transactions at the endpoint that I'm going to? Can I pre-order my coffee? Can I buy my movie tickets? Uh, can I get tickets to the game all through the vehicle? Uh, and these are uh, new possibilities that didn't exist before when vehicles were not networked and connected, um, but now we're seeing interfaces that are allowing these types of experiences to happen. 
One more example is that you know, sometimes a vehicle isn't the solution. Uh, and, and we talk a lot about first mile, last mile in mobility. So a vehicle can get you so far, but how do I find access to a bike or get a train ticket um, and get access to public transit? Those are other types of integrations that the vehicle can actually help to unlock. Uh, and being able to have that seamless experience from when uh, a, an Uber picks me up at my doorstep to when I am a mile away from the train station and I need to hop on a scooter to make that last mile to hop on the train. You know, can a vehicle actually help expedite that entire decision making flow and all of those transactions? Uh, there's a ton of opportunity in that space as well. So, yeah, we have actually uh, built uh, a number of demonstrators of this um, inside of uh, our team at Accenture. Um, AWS has played an important role in enabling uh, some of these experiences. And uh, I'm actually going to invite my colleague, uh, Wayne Marley, who oversees a, a good amount of this development, to come up and uh, talk about some of the things that we've built. Uh, and while Wayne is wake, making his way up, uh, we'll play a little video to show you some of uh, what we've already started developing. Today is the day of the big trip. Alexa has the itinerary and even reminded them to pack the kids' favorite snacks. Today, our connected world makes it easier than ever to discover new destinations, explore our surroundings, and collect new experiences. From home to destination, today's driver yearns to access new roads in life and has the power to do so at their fingertips. They crave personalized, authentic experiences to share with friends and family. Entering their vehicle should be more than just a trip. It should be an adventure. The future of mobility lies in seamlessly connecting drivers and passengers to their destinations in delightful ways. To remain relevant, companies will need to embrace their customers, not only to address their mobility needs, but to better understand their behaviors, to anticipate and recommend their next move, and to personalize their driving experience. The mobility ecosystem of the future will be built on trust, with integrated in-vehicle payments, fully connected systems health checks, and personalized recommendations. Drivers expect reliable, responsive experiences that have their family's safety and security at the forefront. Let's go down that road together. Great, so how many, how many people did that video resonate with? How many people take road trips? Starting to see some more, right? A lot of chaos behind planning of those road trips, particularly when you have kids and, um, you know, and animals and all different kinds of things that you have to, uh, you know, to, pay, uh, to pay mind to in preparation for that journey and for um, you know, um, you know, creating an experience for your family that's memorable. So I, I think a couple of the key things that, that Zephyr hit on earlier um, are, are really what we're going to focus in on this video, right? Or, or in on the, the video and then the demo that the video sort of tees up, right? The, um, the, key, the key thing for us is as we see a rise in the sharing economy and as we start to progress towards uh, a world where autonomy is not quite a reality, of course, but is becoming a reality, the experience uh, becomes key. It becomes key for brand affinity uh, and brand loyalty, but also uh, in unlocking mobility um, ecosystem services that can be monetized, right? Because as we start to see um, less asset ownership, that revenue needs to come from somewhere for an OEM. So uh, really, again, what we focused here on in this particular demo uh, has to do with the experience, and the key asset that underpins the experience that we're delivering is one of uh, AWS's AI services called Personalize. And what Personalize does is it brings the power of uh, Amazon's recommendation engine that underpins their retail site uh, and, and brings that to uh, an OEM or a product manufacturer that may not have the right sort of uh, uh, data science expertise or capability to actually go and develop those types of algorithms so that they're effective, right? And that those algorithms can, be do, can, can work to accomplish a number of things, right? They can work to accomplish 
um, you know, decision making and trip planning and, and providing uh, guidance, uh, you know, regarding um, activities and, and, and things that fit into the context of your day and the context of your journey. Or they can also uh, be part and parcel to the actual recommendation of different mobility services that are compelling uh, to that individual that owns the, that, that's, uh, that's partaking in that uh, transportation experience uh, so that there is a higher probability of actually monetizing those services, which has become, become, becomes critical for, for automotive OEMs. So let's see the next slide. So what we tried to do um, in our uh, demo is it's really comprised of, of a couple of different applications. Uh, there's an application that we use to better understand who the individual is, which we call an intake application. And that one is powered by, um, by Personalize. Uh, this application itself is something that a, an OEM or a product manufacturer can create as part of a companion app. They can, you know, can exist as, as some sort of a marketing portal um, you know, that, that can be used to execute different types of um, communications and surveys. Um, uh, you know, and then it can also exist sort of embedded within the vehicle's architecture so that as the vehicle makes uh, you know, different trips and journeys and stops and things of that nature, that that information can be collected, retrieved, and, and put into context about um, to better understand who that individual is, the types of typical journeys that they make. So what we're going to see here is a, is a, uh, a, screen, a, a video of our intake application, which again is underpinned by, uh, primarily by Personalize, but we're also using some other features uh, that, that uh, AWS makes available, available like recognition because of course um, we can't personalize anything without being able to recognize who in fact the individual is that we're that we're intending to, uh, to curate uh, an experience for. So let me see if I can get this. Uh... So here we see on the intake app the, the image being taken. And what we've done here is we've created a sort of a, an image palette, right, that our, um, that our participant can go through and just select the images that are appealing to him. And, and based on, on these selections, we've created, um, you know, a couple of data, we've created a decent data set uh, that enables us to create a profile for this individual and then ultimately make recommendations about how we're going to curate the stops and the events that we're planning for the road trip ahead, right? Again, it doesn't have to be limited to those types of things, right? It can, it can also be uh, baked into the different mobility services that you would ultimately offer to this individual, right? And you'll see one of those mobility services at the end where we talk about a concept called chargeback, uh, where um, it, the individual is going to be at their destination for an extended period of time and has a bi-directional relationship with the utilities provider so that that, that vehicle can be used uh, as capacity, as grid capacity, and they can be compensated for it. And again, because we understand the context of the journey that the, indiv the individual has taken, uh, you know, we're able to, to suggest that service as a, part of, uh, as a part of the experience. So what we'll move over to now is a head unit application. Oops, let's see here. Oops, let's go to the next one. So now we're going to go to the second application that's a part of this demo. And you can think of this, this is the head unit that would exist in your vehicle. So, um, you know, it's going to show us actually uh, embarking on our trip. As a third part of the application that you won't see here, uh, we have an actual um, an application that runs on a curved monitor that sort of simulates the actual journey that you're taking uh, through video and some pop-ups that show when we're calling actual AWS back-end services. Um, Probably just to give you a, a bit of background into the services that we're using. Again, Personalize is one of the key, the key services that we're using. We're using IoT Core and Greengrass to harvest data, to harvest CAN data from the vehicle. Uh, we're using Poly to actually narrate um, uh, points, events along the journey. Um, we're using Poly primarily um, because for demo purposes, it, 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 works, it works out better to enhance the experience. But as we start to, to look deeper into how 
that type of uh, experience can evolve, we would certainly look more towards um, uh, Alexa, uh, Alexa Auto to do, to do those types of things. Um, recognition is the other, another key, uh, key feature that we're using here. And we also have um, Amazon Pay sort of baked in. It doesn't, we're not actually making calls out to, the, <laughs> to, any, uh, to any payment gateways, but, but we're using Amazon Pay as part of, um, you know, as part of the, the, uh, the experience to pay for the charging that's associated with, with the road trip that we're about to take. So let's go ahead and, and look at this. So again, we've got Alex again going through. So he steps into the vehicle. The vehicle's camera recognizes him, says, hey, Alex. And we're going to initiate a vehicle system health check. It's based on real CAN data. We're using uh, IoT Core to, to ingest that data. And so we're doing a systems check that's based on the context of the journey that's about to be taken, right? Not just um, you know, based on uh, present conditions, present sort of static conditions, right? Uh, now we're loading in the trip that we're about to take and uh, the stops that we're going to make along the way, right? So we, we initiate our journey. And we're going to time warp here in a second. So there's a bit more of a visual effect and you can actually see the application that runs on the, on the, the windshield application. And so here we're presented with a... Um, we're presented with, with the option to, to, to divert uh, to a, a charging station that actually has a restaurant that, that we know that Alex would be interested in based on his preferences. And, and why do we do that, right? Well, because charging takes time, right? So it's not like pulling into a gas station, gassing up for 10 minutes, and when you've got some antsy kids in the car, you've got to have some activities that are planned. So the idea here is, is that we're making the most of that scenario by planning a charging stop that, uh, that can accommodate some of the interest of, uh, of the people that we have in the vehicle. We pay for that transaction using Amazon Pay. We're back on the road. All right, we're going to see a time warp again. Again, the time warp's a little more um, uh, interesting when you can see the windshield application. <laughs> uh, and as we, we reach our, our destination in Yosemite, As we come to the end, uh, we will see a set of activities that, um, that we've curated on the basis of, of, again, Alex's profile and using Personalize uh, that he might be interested in doing. Right? So he's able to select these and send these activities to his mobile device. As we think about the, the context of this journey, he's now at, at a national park, so he's not going to be at his vehicle. Again, we recognize that he's at a national park. <laughs> And, and his, uh, his vehicle is going to be parked for a certain period of time. And so we present him with the option of this chargeback that we talked about. So offering his vehicle up as, a, as, as, ex, as additional capacity uh, to, the, uh, to the grid in, in exchange for, for some, sort, some form of compensation. So he's able to actually schedule that, uh, let the system know when he needs his vehicle to be ready and fully charged by. And in the meantime, he's able to recoup um, to, re, uh, you know, to, to generate a little income off of, off of his dormant vehicle. So, um, and then that's, that's where our, our, our demo ends here. Um, this demo is one of two demos that we have in place in, in our space. Um, and I, I'm irresponsible and don't have, <laughs> have the location, but I promise we can get that to you. Uh, the second demo that we have it really takes, takes a step back and looks at how this data is managed, how this trip data is managed across a full fleet of vehicles, right? So, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of vehicles, how that, how that data can be ingested, um, consented, uh, consented for, for specific usage, granular, different types of granular usage, uh, how we can uh, ensure that that consent is stored in an immutable record it, from Amazon's perspective, we're using private blockchain QLDB to do that, uh, and then package it up in a way uh, such that it has value, has structure and value uh, for uh, prospective marketplace buyers. And then we're, we're then um, pushing it into a new product that, that, that uh, AWS just launched called Data Exchange. And, and again, um, re really cool concept that, that, uh, that we're working on. And, and, uh, We've, got a, we've, got a, we've created uh, a Unity, an application in Unity 
that, that makes <laughs> data ingestion fun, dare I say fun, right? That makes, look, look, that helps to illustrate the concept in a, in a, uh, in a way that's, um, that's at least, uh, you know, in, in some way intriguing. So with that, I'm gonna pass it back over to, uh, to, to Zephyr to, to finish up. Thanks, Wayne. <clears throat> So as Wayne mentioned, I mean, both of these demos are uh, available for you to come interact with uh, in our booth. It's uh, 1417 uh, is the booth number, uh, and we'll put that up on the screen for you to uh, jot down and, and come check us out. Um, but you know, hopefully you get a sense of you know, the types of experiences that we're, we're trying to build. Um, and the second demo that Wayne mentioned is, is significantly important as well because there is such an increasing emphasis on data and monetization. And uh, whether you're an OEM or a supplier um, or even um, one of these uh, sort of endpoints, if you will, that's trying to integrate retail or, or other things into a mobility service, um, the movement of that data, the ability to package that data and uh, actually put it into a marketplace where people can um, select the data sets that they want and, and be able to uh, access and purchase that data um, is something that everyone is trying to figure out. Um, so for, for AWS to uh, build that data exchange service um, and for uh, companies to start adopting it um, is, is really exciting. Uh, and we're gonna see much more of that happening um, I'm confident that, that that's really going to evolve more uh, in the years to come. Um, so as we start to think about all of the different types of use cases for uh, connected vehicles, the experiences we want to build on top of that, um, I just wanted to leave you with one last provocation. And, and this is something that um, I have a lot of fun thinking about. Um, in the autonomous future, uh, especially when there isn't a driver behind the wheel, uh, what does our relationship with the vehicle look like? Um, and we, we have a few ideas here of the way that people will be using vehicles, whether it's for business meetings. Um, the, the, the previous company that I was with before I joined uh, Accenture, um, we focused on building self-driving shuttles. Uh, and one of the biggest use cases that we found was um, people shuttling between meetings um, from one building to another. Uh, and they were almost continuing their business conversations in the vehicle, um, so much so that we, we dubbed it the conference room. Um, and you know, that's a real application that we believe enterprise campuses are gonna need. You know, similarly, uh, entertainment. You know, instead of going and staying overnight in a hotel, can I hop in a, in a vehicle that offers me the comfort of uh, a movie to watch, a comfortable bed to stay in, uh, and actually use that vehicle as my hotel room on wheels? So there are gonna be many of these new types of applications for us to think about with autonomous vehicles, um, but we still have a lot to think about in answering the question of how does it meet the expectations that we currently have with a human driver? Think about the relationship you have with your taxi driver or even you know, with, if you're driving your children around and they're in the back seat asking you questions. How do we help ensure that we're maintaining the best condition of the cabin, that it's clean, that it's safe, uh, how do we monitor the activity uh, in the cabin that Johnny and Susie aren't in a fight and, and, and beating each other up in the back seat? Um, how do we give it commands? If I need to change my destination or I'm not feeling well, I need to stop and get out, uh, how do I interface with that vehicle to be able to do those things? Um, these are all the types of things that while we've invested so much in autonomous vehicles, building that tech stack with how the vehicle interacts with the uh, world outside of it, there's still very little, and this is white space for us to go explore, how we deal with those interactions inside of the cabin. And this is exactly where a connected vehicle platform with all of the types of services that Wayne described, uh, facial recognition, personalization, voice services, these are all things that we are going to need to have in that tech stack uh, inside of the vehicle. So as part of this provocation, you know, giving you an idea of what that stack might look like, how you might architect uh, those services inside of the vehicle, you know, think about the inputs that you'll need inside of the cabin. Uh, whether that's your own personal devices that you're using to interact with the vehicle, uh, 
touchscreen interfaces um, are, are something that are being actively explored, and obviously we've seen the transition to that in uh, many of the head units already. Those screens are only going to get larger uh, and offer us more interactions uh, to have. Uh, voice interfaces, um, we're already seeing, uh, especially through uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, um, bringing those uh, voice services into the vehicle. How are they going to become native in the vehicle? Um, that's going to be something that we're going to see in the future here. Um, and then certainly, and arguably a little controversially, the, the need for cameras inside of a car. Uh, how do we actually monitor the state of the vehicle and what's happening? Um, today we rely on a human to do that, um, but in the future, will that be the responsibility of a camera talking to a computer or to a remote monitor who's monitoring the condition of the vehicle? Um, and then you'll have a software layer, uh, and, and that interface layer may include cloud services um, to, to enable different types of experiences. It will certainly need to interface with the uh, autonomous vehicle compute system um, to be able to uh, give instructions to the vehicle based on what's happening inside of the cabin, uh, and certainly where necessary, uh, remote assistance. You know, do I need to ask a human being a question, um, and how do I access that human being that's sitting in a remote call center or or something like that. You know, when we start to build out that interface layer uh, and then start to think about what are the outputs through which we're communicating these things to the passenger inside of the vehicle. So again, the need for displays, uh, different types of lighting cues, lighting as a communication mechanism, um, and uh, there, Ford and num a number of others are starting to do studies in this, uh, creating different types of uh, communication uh, archetypes through lighting. Uh, audio systems, of course, um, and then controlling the vehicle. So, you know, it's exciting to think about in the future uh, how we're going to uh, build a technology stack that uh, offers these types of services and how you might architect it to uh, really create the type of comfort and trust and um, level of service that we come to expect when there's a human driver behind the wheel. So I want to end by just, you know, talking more broadly about the, the mobility ecosystem. You know, we've traditionally thought about uh, the car and the automaker as kind of the owner of that experience, but the reality is with this new proliferation of technology, um, there are many new entries into the mobility ecosystem, and while the automotive companies are focusing on these case priorities, um, you're also seeing the tech companies like Amazon and Google and others starting to uh, create services for vehicles. You're starting to see the travel industry and the hospitality industry um, enter into this and, and the role that Airbnb plays, for example, in your uh, travel and mobility experience. Uh, cities are certainly paying very close attention to the evolution of mobility and how do they control vehicle access to roads. We're hearing more and more that m many cities, especially in Europe, are starting to limit uh, vehicle access to roads and, and limit uh, uh, you know, traditional fuel uh, or, or ice engine vehicles on roads. Uh, so cities are also playing an important part of this. But what, all of this is leading us to sort of a new mobility ecosystem. Uh, and that really opens up the realm of opportunity to anyone that wants to enter and play in the space. Whether you are a traditional automaker, whether you are a tier one supplier that's now thinking about new ways to participate, um, and certainly startups. And we've seen many of those startups uh, enter into the space and uh, really disrupt um, in, in the way that uh, Uber and Lyft have, um, and Google has with Waymo. Um, so this new ecosystem is, is really a wide open playing field um, for uh, people to come in and either innovate their traditional business models or come in and disrupt with new business models that we may not have thought about yet uh, in, in the industry. Uh, and the beauty of this is that AWS sits right at the heart of this and they're enabling much of this transformation. Um, we're seeing an incredibly rapid growth of connected and cloud-based products and services in this industry. Um, and the adoption is size and stage agnostic. Like I said, whether you are a 100-year-old automaker um, or you are a up-and-coming startup, um, 
anyone can jump on board and start to build these types of services at scale and fast. Uh, and at the end of the day, it all focuses around how do we create new experiences? How do we enable a wide variety of mobility solutions to get you where you want to go, when you want to go, and how you want to get there? Uh, and, and that's really uh, that cloud and connectivity sitting at the center of it is what enables all of this to happen. Um, so we at Accenture are very excited to be working very closely with AWS and many of our industry partners um, to be building uh, some of these solutions in this space. Uh, and we're excited to have those conversations with many of you. Um, so we invite you to come talk to us and figure out how we can start this journey together. Um, we've got a couple of uh, touch points where we will invite you to come uh, meet with us and, and talk. Uh, Wayne um, talked already about the demos that we have at our booth. We invite you to come out to the Expo floor uh, to booth 1714. Check out our demos, meet with our team, uh, let us know what you're thinking about in this space, and, and you can learn more about some of the other initiatives that we're leading. Um, we also, uh, at 2.15, um, on the, the corner uh, of this floor uh, at the Ironwood Terrace, we're hosting a, uh, an automotive and manufacturing lounge. Uh, myself, Wayne, and a number of our other leaders um, will be there, and we welcome you to come uh, talk to us uh, shortly in the next half hour or so, um, and uh, we'll have a great opportunity to, to have a conversation and interact there. Um, so with that, um, I will say thank you for kind of this uh, formal part of our presentation. Um, I'd like to invite my colleagues uh, Keith Boone and Wayne Marley back onto the stage, and uh, we're happy to take any questions that you might have for us at this time.